Hey everyone! Have you ever imagined what life would be like without electricity? It would be tough, right? No hot showers with electric heaters, no elevators in high rise buildings, and no charging of your phones or laptops. But where does the electricity we use every day come from? Today we're diving into Electric Generator, the heart of power generation. We'll explore how they work, break down their key components, and see where they're commonly used. Ready? Let's get started. If you enjoy the content, please don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and turn on the notification bell so you never miss any update. So, what exactly is an electric generator? Simply put, it's a machine that converts mechanical energy into electrical energy. But where does this mechanical energy come from? It can be from steam turbines, wind turbines, gas engines, or even hydraulic turbines. In fact, a generator works in the reverse of an electric motor that we have discussed in our previous videos. While motors take electrical energy and convert it into mechanical movement, generators do the opposite. Here's where it gets interesting. Generators work based on Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction. Let's simplify this concept. Imagine we have a single coil of wire, called an armature, placed between the north and south poles of a magnet. When this coil is rotated by a prime mover, it cuts through the magnetic field, inducing an electromotive force, EMF, in the conductor. Using Fleming's right hand rule, where you stretch out your right hand with your thumb, index finger, and middle finger perpendicular to each other. Your index finger points in the direction of the magnetic field, your thumb shows the movement of the coil, and your middle finger will indicate the direction of the induced EMF. As the coil rotates through 180 degrees, the EMF changes direction. The change in direction produces an alternating current. But what if we need DC power instead? That's where a split ring commutator comes into play. It ensures the EMF maintains the same direction, creating direct current. To smooth out the DC output, a capacitor can be used. So far, we've discussed the basic component of the generator, also called the alternator, which is the part of the generator that converts mechanical energy into electrical energy. In our earlier illustration, a conductor coil rotating within a magnetic field can generate EMF. But instead of rotating the coil, another way to achieve the same result is by creating a rotating magnetic field that cuts through stationary conductors to generate electricity. In real-world generators, the second approach is adopted. The stator or stationary part holds the stator windings. On the other hand, the rotor windings are excited by a DC current to create a magnetic field. When rotor spins, the magnetic field rotates and cuts through the stator windings, producing AC power at the stator. In practical applications, generators like diesel or gas power generators have more complexity. They consist of various crucial components working together to produce the stable electricity we rely on daily. To better understand how a generator operates, let's compare it to something familiar, a car. Yes, you heard that right. A car functions much like a small generator, self-sustaining the electrical systems within it. Here's how. In a car, the process begins with the battery. When you start the car by turning the key, the battery directs an electric current flow in the ignition system. This creates a spark at the spark plugs, which is hot enough to ignite the air fuel mixture in the engine's combustion chamber. Now imagine what happens next. The engine, designed with several combustion chambers, each containing a piston, experiences a controlled explosion. This pushes the pistons downward, converting the up and down motion into rotational energy that drives the car's shaft. Here's where the comparison to a generator becomes clearer. As the engine runs, it turns the rotor of an alternator connected to the shaft. In the alternator, the rotating magnetic field cuts the stator windings, and electric current is generated through electromagnetic induction. This is why a car's electrical components can continue to work when the engine is running. The alternator is doing its job, converting mechanical energy into electrical energy to recharge the battery and run the car's electronics. The car's alternator is a small-scale version of what happens in a larger generator, where mechanical energy from an engine or a prime mover 
is converted into electrical energy to power homes, offices, and entire industries. Next, generators rely on several key components to ensure smooth and efficient operation. The fuel system supplies the fuel needed for continuous engine operation. Besides, the lubrication system keeps all moving parts running smoothly to reduce wear and tear. To prevent overheating, the cooling system circulates coolant and provides essential ventilation. The exhaust system ensures that combustion fumes or waste are safely expelled from the generator. Additionally, the control panel allows us to start or stop the generator and real-time monitoring of parameters such as voltage, current, coolant temperature, fuel level, oil pressure, rotational speed, and etc. The battery charger keeps the battery charged and ready for use. Finally, the frame provides structural support and protection for all of these components. You might have noticed that we save the most intelligent parts of the generator for last. Two important questions often arise when discussing generator operation. Firstly, how do we supply DC current to a rotor that is constantly spinning? And secondly, how can we ensure the output voltage remains stable and at a suitable level for connected loads? These challenges are addressed by the clever design of the pilot exciter, main exciter, rotating rectifier, and automatic voltage regulator, AVR. These exciters contain both stationary and rotating parts, interacting with each other through electromagnetic induction. Here's how these components work together to generate DC field current for the main rotor windings. The process begins with a pilot exciter that uses a permanent magnet. Once the engine starts and the rotor connected to the shaft begins to rotate, the rotating magnetic field from the permanent magnet induces AC voltage in the pilot exciter windings. This AC voltage is then rectified into DC to energize the stationary windings of the main exciter. Through electromagnetic induction, AC voltage is generated in the main exciter's rotating windings. This AC output is then rectified using a rotating rectifier, converting it to DC field current flow in the main rotor windings. This setup produces a rotating magnetic field in the main rotor windings, which cuts across the main stator windings to generate an AC output. To maintain stable output voltage, generators employ an automatic voltage regulator, or in short, AVR. The AVR monitors the output voltage and adjusts the DC field current in the rotor to ensure the voltage stays within a specific range. For example, in cars, the AVR regulates the alternator output between 13.5 and 14.5 volts to ensure that the battery and electrical components function properly without damage. The AVR achieves this by precise switching of the pilot exciter's rectifier circuits, thereby adjusting the DC field current. If the output voltage is too high, it decreases the DC field current to reduce the voltage. Conversely, if the voltage falls below the desired level, the AVR increases the DC field current, boosting the output to a stable level. Finally, let's explore some real-world applications of generators. Large-scale generators are vital in power plants, supplying the electricity we rely on for our everyday activities. In 2023, over 60% of global electricity was still generated using fossil fuels such as natural gas and coal. Other alternative energy sources like wind, hydro, and many others are also harnessed to provide mechanical energy for power generation. Generators also provide portable power solutions, making work possible in remote areas. For instance, at construction sites where grid electricity is not available, portable generators are used to power essential tools. They're also commonly used for outdoor events. Moreover, generators are essential as standby power supplies during power outages. They serve as backup power sources for homes, hospitals, data centers, and businesses, ensuring that critical services remain operational when the main power grid fails. That's a wrap for today's video. I hope this gave you a clearer picture of how generators work, their essential components, and their many applications. If you find this video helpful, please remember to like, subscribe, turn on the notifications, and share it with others. Thanks for watching, and see you in the next one.